Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name's Acacia. Today I'm going to be wrapping up my Thriller-a-thon reads. I have two, four, six books here which I read in a matter of six days, so I'm going to dive in and talk to you about them in the order of least to most enjoyed. So let's start with this one. This is Snap. Now I'm going to put this out here right now. I didn't dislike any of the books that I read. I liked all of them. However, there is a variance of which ones I liked the most and which ones I liked the least. And this one I liked the least because as it stands, this has been not nominated, long listed. There we go. For the Man Booker Prize. I had high expectations because of that. I didn't expect like perfection. I didn't expect the ultimate thriller. I just expected more from the writing style and the ideas. And I also expected it to hold together a little bit better. So this is the story of a child named Jack who is left in a car with his two younger sisters while his mom goes to find a phone as their car has broken down. He then takes his two sisters walks along the highway and gets to a payphone which is off of its hook and there's no mother around. He's found by the police with his two sisters and the story goes from there. You do jump around in time, you have different lapses in how where time is and you kind of hear from the future and what what's happened to him and his sisters after the fact. There is another storyline that melds with it in the end, but just you have to kind of see where the link is. I liked it. I liked it fine. If it wasn't long listed, I would have given it four stars, but because it was long listed, I had higher expectations. And so it left me feeling disappointed. Then we have Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith. Um, this one this one was chunky and it took me two days to finish it wasn't as bad as i expected as far as length goes but as far as the corman strike series goes this one is not my favorite i think my favorite is still the first one. Um, I usually like the first in the series the best. Um, I have a soft spot for those. This one I enjoyed and I do think I want to reread it because there were some points at which at the end I was like oh I wonder if that had to do with this at the beginning. So I want to reprocess and this may go up a star with a reread but at the moment it is not the perfect book for me and it didn't feel as good as I wanted it to. It it has um, a mystery revolving around a severed leg that is sent to Robin and they have to figure out whose leg it is, why it was sent to them, who did it, all that stuff. It was interesting, it kept me immersed, but it didn't keep me happy. So that's that. Then we have The Hypnotist, which is the a Jonah Lina novel and it's by Lars Kepler. Lars Kepler is a husband and wife duo team. So there is, this book was published earlier and now it's being reissued and republished with a new translator. So it's being translated from Swedish, I believe. Um, Swedish, yes. The first book that I read is the fourth in the series, and that's The Sandman. I loved The Sandman. I adored it. I thought it was excellent. I really liked the mystery. I really felt connected to it, and I just really had a lot of fun with it. This one is the first one. They're going out of order in the publication. They did the fourth one first and now they're going back and doing the first, second, and third. I don't know in what timeline they're going to be doing it, but I know that they're going in that order. This one has to do with a homicide. It's more detective-y. It feels more, it feels more basic and it feels like a first attempt at a novel. It doesn't 
flow as seamlessly and as intricately as the Sandman did and it doesn't cause me to find as much nuggets of information along the way. The Sandman, I wasn't able to predict what was happening, but I was able to really appreciate moments at the end that really were intensified by the ending um, that I saw as past information. Um, this didn't do that for me as well. It did it just fine, but it didn't do it as well. I do plan to continue on with the series. I really enjoy it and I am excited to see the rest of them. I'm hoping that this just has the debut novel syndrome where it just doesn't work properly because it's still trying to get its groove. I'm hoping that's the case. So next is Final Girls by Riley Sager. I had a lot of fun with this. I would recommend this one to a lot of people who like thrillers and if you like that horror scream genre from the movies this is a lot of fun. So it talks about a young girl named Quincy who goes on vacation with her friends and then she's the only one who comes back and now she's part of an elite club called the Final Girls Club um, and it's all these women who are survivors of a massacre. And Quincy starts to get her life together and things start being okay, but then the girls start disappearing and she's wondering who is killing off these final girls. Um, and you follow it from there. I really enjoyed it. I definitely would recommend it. I had a lot of fun reading it. I am going to read the next novel that is written by this author. I might pick it up on audio, but I'm going to pick it up in paperback when it releases, whenever that may be. Um, I want to read it in the summer of next year or maybe this month. I'm not sure. I'm undecided, but I do know I'm going to pick it up. I might pick it up in hardcover. I don't know. I'm unsure. But I really enjoyed it. The other one's about a summer camp, so I just feel like it should be summer, you know, and it's not summer anymore, but it still kind of feels like summer because it's hot. I don't know. Then we have Bird Box by Josh Mallerman. I really enjoyed this. I went through it once already halfway and then I had to put it down because I was terrified and now I finished it. It took me one day and one night of insomnia. So I did pretty well. Um, this, this is interesting. So this is the story of a woman who lives in a world where there are creatures that if you see them, you go crazy and kill others or yourself. And so if you leave your home, you need to be blindfolded. And she decides that she no longer wants to live in this environment. And so she takes her two children on a river, all three of them blindfolded, to get to safety. And the story progresses from there. I found the idea of not being able to see the predator very scary and interesting. I was terrified. I had a lot of fun with it. I really enjoyed it. I feel very strongly that it is a solid read. However, I do not love it. I don't feel as if it's the best I've ever read. I know that April from Getting Hooga With It, whose channel I will link up above, this is her favorite horror book. My favorite horror book has to be Cabin at the End of the World. And this is not that kind of suspense. It didn't have me unable to shower because I was so afraid of being having the curtain closed. It didn't have that effect on me. I thought it was going to, but it just didn't go as far as I wanted it to. So I could have gotten more out of it. Then the last one and the one I enjoyed the most is The Upstairs Room by Kate Murray Brown. I was not loving this when I first picked it up, but after a while I just started to adore it. It talks about a young woman and her husband, so Eleanor and Richard, who are living in a home that 
something happened in this home that was not right and now the house is strange and has a weird vibe to it. They have a tenant who lives with them and their two children and weird things start happening to her. She starts waking up in the night while she's standing at the end of her bed. Um, she starts having sleep apnea and things are moving around the house and there is a name written in different rooms of the house scribbled out in child's writing um and there is a room up in the attic that is covered in this name and something about this room feels off and weird i enjoyed it thoroughly i will definitely be rereading it but 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 i bought it from the uk I wish I hadn't. I don't think it is good enough for me to pay that extra shipping that I pay for when I order from the UK because I don't order from Book Depository. I don't like Book Depository. Book Depository has screwed me over a couple of times. So I order from Waterstones and Waterstones does really well but they're expensive and so I don't order from them very often but when I do it's because I have a specific book that I really really want and I wanted this one a lot. But it didn't live up to that expectation. I loved it. If I had bought it in the US, I would tell you to go out and buy it. And I would definitely say that it's worth the purchase. But if you are not in the UK, and you don't have the funds to just throw willy nilly, this is not worth that extra cash. Just an FYI. Enjoyed it, but not worth the price I paid. So that is my wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed. I had a lot of fun doing this readathon. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, click that subscribe button down below. If you have any questions, comments, or quandaries, go ahead and link them in the comment box. I will talk to you in my next video, and I'll see you there. Bye.